What's up guys, Sixpack here. Now that we've seen all the new games at E3 2017, it's time to take a look at which were the best games we saw this year. We saw a lot of great gameplay and even though I miss seeing something from games like The Last of Us 2 or Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm really excited about a lot of the games that were shown. And I want to hear from you what your favorite game was too. And uh, make sure to let me know why in the comments below. Uh, also important to mention is that this is what I personally liked best. So no problem to disagree with me, just let yourself be heard in the comments. Too close. My home, the sacred oasis. We already saw quite a bit about the new Assassin's Creed before the presentation as the Egyptian setting and new character had already leaked online. I was pretty excited about the new setting when I heard about it and seeing the game in action made me really happy. You just don't see a lot of games set in the Roman era which I think is a really interesting time in history. It seems the biggest change is coming to the combat system as well as the way you acquire gear. Uh, it seems the game is going to be more in the direction of an action RPG, RPG like uh, The Witcher 3, which I think is a good thing. I just hope they don't try to play it too safe gameplay-wise and they come with some original ideas to do in this setting. If they manage to do that, it might put the series back on track. I love pirates. Everyone loves pirates. But that's why it's so shocking there are so few games where you can actually play as them. Uh, I think the gameplay demo of Sea of Thieves looked really impressive. Uh, having this huge open world to explore in multiplayer with your own ship, hunting for treasure while your crew and you fight off other players, uh, is something we just need. I got a really good feeling about this one, can't wait to play it. Got a mortar equipped. Yeah, Anthem got a from Bioware looks a bit like a crossover between Destiny and The Division, and it's looking pretty good. What's really stood out for me in the gameplay for this co op shooter RPG is the traversal. It seems you'll be able to fly around like Iron Man. It looks so good. <laughs> if this game avoids the traps that uh, Destiny and The Division fell in, uh, this one could become really special. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. <laughs> I played a lot of Call of Duty 2 back on PC and I have uh, many great memories from it. After all those futuristic titles that didn't really interest me much, they are now finally going back to the setting I love. I hope they make it really authentic, give it a great campaign just like Call of Duty 2 had and for the multiplayer they really need the scale that Call of Duty 2 had as well. I want big 32 vs 32 battles on large balanced maps. Even if they don't go that big, the maps are going to be really important I think. I really really loved Shadow of Mordor, the game before Shadow of War. Those of you that have been following me from before Rocket League and saw my earlier videos uh, know this already. It was a great game with an awesome setting with fantastic combat. Uh, one of the things that made it really stand out was the dynamic nemesis system which made all the bosses of the orcs in the world uh, unique. You were able to play around with them and influence the hierarchy within the orcs and even set them up to fight against each other. It was fantastic. Now with the second game, they're expanding on this with more options and content. They've also added in these big siege battles which allow you to take over enemy fortresses with your own highly customizable orc army. I'm super pumped for this game. 
Right lord, that lord. Same thing, really. It results me ripping spines out, which I like to do anyway, so either way's a win. A fine addition to our army. Name's Bruce. From here on out, I will be your shadow. No, I'm just... <laughs> We saw the first gameplay from Days Gone at last year's E3 uh, with the huge endless infected horde changing uh, the main character around the level. We were all impressed by this but also asked ourselves the question if the game was going to be able to provide more than this. The new gameplay we saw at the Sony conference it assured us that there's a lot more to do in the game and it's awesome. I get a real open world The Last of Us feeling from this uh, from this game with the brutal combat and the intelligent opponents. I love the part for example where the main character was able to lure the infected to an enemy camp by letting a guy step on a bear trap causing him to scream and his friends to freak out. Uh, the guys that developed this also made some of the best PSP and Vita games uh, ever made, so I got a lot of confidence in them. I'm really hoping it's coming out this year still, as it seems we still have to wait a long time before The Last of Us 2 will be finished. Drop him! Now! Or I'll kill him! Do it! I'm not here for him. I'm here for you. I saw new gameplay for God of War and it looked absolutely stunning. I played every God of War game, even those on PSP. I loved them, but the series was getting a bit boring due to the lack of uh, change and originality. Uh, I'm super happy that they're making some big changes for this one. And the biggest change being that Kratos is now using a big axe instead of his blades. Uh, it's a welcome one. And story-wise, it seems to have become a more personal story about Kratos and his son, uh, which will hopefully give more meaning to the campaign. You must be a warrior. But not everyone is bad. Mother always said to be open to those who can help. There's no other game series on PSP or 3DS in which I have spent as many hours as Monster Hunter. I've been waiting for almost a decade for the series to return to PlayStation and now it's finally happening. Online co-op, better graphics, new monsters, new and more dynamic combat, my prayers have been answered. If you never played Monster Hunter, I urge you to try it. There's no re there's a there's a big reason that it's been a hype in Japan for so many years, and what really makes it stand out is the replayability and uh, meaningful progression. You're always killing monsters in order to acquire their parts that you can use to build new armor and weapons. So you're gradually making yourself stronger and allowing you to take on tougher monsters. It's really hard to put uh, to put down once you begin the journey. I'm going to have to take a long time of work uh, for this game. Spider-Man 2 on PlayStation 2 remains the best superhero game to date in my opinion. And the great swinging mechanics and open world freedom in the game were unlike anything we had ever seen uh, until that point. After a bunch of mediocre Spider-Man sequel games that followed it, uh, this new game uh, its being made by the geniuses of Insomniac who also made Ratchet and Clank and it's looking absolutely crazy. Uh, the gameplay, atmosphere and graphics we saw, it really blew me away. 
I would have been happy with just a HD reskin of Spider-Man 2, but this looks like it's going to really deliver. I just hope that they give us total freedom in the game and they don't just focus too much on quick time events, which is what's really screwed up the previous games. But even with some quick time events in the gameplay that they showed, it's looking like total crazy. I can't wait for this one. Please don't screw this up! And as my number one game, it's the VR game we've all been waiting for. Finally! Fishing with Final Fantasy XV! Uh, just kidding, what the... what were they thinking? Oh my god. My number one game of the show is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Finally, it looks like they'll be giving us the Star Wars game we deserve. I liked Battlefront 1, but it had some really big flaws. The main one being the huge lack of content. Now after all the DLC that came out, it's actually pretty good. But all of this should have been in the base game and it wasn't. They really listened to what we wanted for the second game though, as it seems we're getting pretty much all of it. A campaign mode, all eras, more maps, a meaningful progression system, more customization, a fair power-up system instead of those stupid pickups, no paid maps and the list goes on. The gameplay looks absolutely amazing. I did find it a bit weird that they had, they had heroes for the different eras fighting each other together, but I presume this might just be to show off uh, for the E3 build. But this game can't come soon enough for me. So what game are you hyped for? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. See you all next time. Sector is clear. Not clear, not clear!